Um, not so far, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, just to re reconfirm, uh, Annalise and myself work in the investment team at Sport Wales. And we here to talk to you about the uh, one strand of the Sports Resilience Fund. So some of you may have seen things in the press around the Sports Resilience Fund. That is the, the um, overall Sport Wales response to COVID-19. Um, initially, it was made up of the Emergency Relief Fund, the ERF, which closed last week. Some of the clubs on this call or, or watching it later or listening later may have access a grant through that. Um, I think we did fund quite a few football clubs uh, for the ERF. So just to confirm, um, there are two strands to the Be Active Wales Fund, and that's the two strands that Annalise and I will talk to you about this evening. I will touch upon Protect, which is the, the screen in front of us now, uh, and Annalise will, will, will touch upon Prepare, which is the, the second element of it. So if, if I start with Protect, um, this is pretty much the same as the ERF was between April and June. Um, it's a, an emergency fund to cover uh, short-term costs where those costs are fixed, they have to be paid. However, there is no income potentially coming in to pay for those costs. So typically, these costs would be um, utility bills, so gas, water, electric normally, uh, rent, insurance. And the, the only slight difference with this is that, uh, with this element of the fund, is that for the ERF, we prioritized sort of green, or sort of grass, cutting and, and, and pitch preparation for summer sports. So cricket, golf and bowls effectively. Whereas I think going through into the autumn, we will we'll obviously have to place more of an emphasis on those winter sports or those sports that go back late summer, early autumn. So the likes of football and rugby. Um, I suppose it's important to emphasize that until there's an absolute date for football to return, I guess a football pitch doesn't need full maintenance or full preparation. So, you know, we would work with, with a trust on, on a, an appropriate level of maintenance or upkeep, but there's no doubt that these pitches or some pitches will need a little bit of attention just to ensure that they are playable as and when football can return. So that is really the, the, the fund as it is. Um, the other thing to note as well is that um, if clubs apply as time goes on, they can only claim for retrospective eligible costs back from the 1st of July. Anything pre 1st of July uh, is not eligible. So the costs have to have been accrued post 1st July and also have to be payable between the 1st of July or the date of award, a date of application and a three month period ongoing. So we will only uh, look ahead three months from the date of the application. If, if a cost is, is itemized at six or eight months away, it wouldn't be eligible because that's too far away. Um, it's 100% funding potentially, so clubs can apply for the full amount. Um, and I guess where there are things like, uh, you know, certainly the rent and the bills and the insurance, we would effectively look at, at a quarterly pro rata of those costs to, to reflect the three month nature or the rolling three month nature of that, uh, of that fund. One other thing to note as well is that um, any applicant to apply to the ERF, successful or unsuccessful, can apply to protect, uh, so that doesn't preclude. So in other words, every club in theory can apply. However, there is strict criteria in place through the FAW Trust, so it, it may be that some clubs are not suitable for protect, but in theory, it's open to everybody. Uh, Annalise, do you want to pick up, um, prepare? Yeah, cheers, Kai. So the second part of the Be Active Wales Fund is our prepare. Um, and this will be up to £50,000, again, a minimum award of three hundred. pounds um, The one thing to note with this is whereas Protect could be up to 100% of the funding, uh, the Prepare will be a minimum of 15% for clubs coming in with a contribution towards the grant you get. So with Prepare, um, in terms of the coronavirus lockdown, this is very open criteria at the moment. We're not sure what we're going to get in. Um, and the big impact is going to be returning to sport safely. So this is the main part. And probably the best way to think about prepare is how can I prepare my club to move back into sport safely and also give participants and volunteers, coaches, the confidence to move back in and know that they're in a safe environment to move forward with this sport. So as with the Protect, it was, it was very strict criteria. Prepare, we're going to look at different things like innovations that would help you move back into 
in this case into back into football um, any adaptations you'd need or safety measures that would need to be put in place at the club or at training sessions that you would know then you're moving back into a safe environment and the big thing on the prepare criteria is the applications have to align to what Welsh government guidelines are and then what the national governing body saw the FAW guidelines would be. One thing that we would say is if an application comes in cold and you haven't consulted with the FAW, you haven't taken part in the survey, it would be very difficult for Sport Wales to even look at funding it if it doesn't align to those guidelines. So that's something that you really, really should work with the FAW on and just consider when you put in the application in. In terms of prepare, like I said, this is very open and it's going to be all about the impact. So when you're filling in the application form, it's really important that you're not just thinking about oh, how many participants can I get involved. Is the impact that your, your application will make on your club, on your participants. So it could be a case of, you know, it's only going to impact five individuals, but how well is that going to be at the, those five individuals as well? In terms of both the protect and the prepare criteria, that's pretty much it from us. But I know me and Kerry can answer any questions that you may have or can have a chat with Ali through. I think it's thanks, Ali. I think it's also just reinforcing that, um, as you say, minimum £300 for both funds. So anybody applying for less than £300 um, will be ineligible. For um, prepare up to £5,000, it's up to 100% funding. The 85% maximum sport wheels award only kicks in for those prepare uh, awards over five thousand and in terms of the the minimum 15 percent of applicant contribution that could come either from club funds fundraising uh, and obviously we do appreciate that at the moment income streams are very tight um, but that 15 percent would either come from in-house somehow um, or it could be other grants other lottery grants potentially um, or in certain circumstances wherein kind contributions are relevant. But we would stress within kind that if you are thinking of, of in kind, to either drop the trust or on these and myself a, a line just to check that what you're proposing is, is along the lines of how we see in kind. Great, thanks both. Annalise, if you could um, stop sharing and then hopefully I'll be able to make myself, if you, could also make my make me host again, Annalise, if you can, with the three dots and the um and your screen. Then that's great. Should be host now. Thanks. Brilliant. And if I um, click through here, so we're back on the main presentation, hopefully. Um, so thanks for, to Kerry and Annalise for just giving an, an overview of, of the two elements in particular and some detail around that. They also highlighted um, the process for, for, the, for the football clubs um, and, and the um, process in terms of how we would deal with them from an FAW Trust perspective. So just wanted to highlight um, what the process is for football clubs and it is slightly different to, to the ERF. So we've put together a COVID-19 impact survey that has gone out as part of the club support update um, last week. And we've, I think we've had 50 uh, responses so far. And that is the, the first port of call for clubs to, um, before they think about applying for the, the Be Active Wales Fund. Once you complete that survey, then we will assess the information that's submitted and we will then assess that information in order to encourage or discourage clubs to apply for the Be Active Wales Fund based on the impact of COVID-19 on your club in terms of your, your wide range of club operation and, and the survey will ask numerous questions around the impact of, of, the, of, um, of the virus on your club's operations from financial impact in terms of but also in terms of on pitch in terms of possible loss of teams, players, um, impact on coaches and volunteers as well. Um, but also there's an opportunity within the, within the survey to detail what you'd be looking to apply for the Be Active Wales Fund for. Based on that information, then we would think, um, say that this club is suitable for the Be Active Wales Fund or so actually this, the impact on, on the club um, isn't significant and the, the detail in terms of the application for the Be Active Wales Fund wouldn't meet the criteria. If you are encouraged, then we will contact you directly to then um, put you in touch with how to apply for the Be Active Wales Fund via Sport Wales. 
and then the, the process would be at, um, with Sport Wales then to, to support or reject the application. But by doing the, the, the prerequisite work um, in terms of the survey, um, and if we do encourage and, and um, assess things based on the impact, but also the detail of what you're looking to apply for, we'd be in a strong position then to highlight um, you know, whether your, your, your application will be supported um, or rejected by Sport Wales. Just to emphasise a little bit more detail on the survey. So it, it will be the prerequisite to apply for the Be Active Wales Fund. It's, a, it's an opportunity for you as a club to detail the wide ranging impact of COVID-19 and the ongoing impact, you know, we know it's not, it hasn't finished um, on, on, on various aspects of your club's operation. The critical thing I would say is the more information you provide, the better informed we will be. So we will be able to um, provide a greater assessment um, on your club situation and, and the opportunity to detail what support you'd be looking for through the Be Active Wales Fund is available through the survey. So I've just taken a snapshot there of what the survey looks like in particular that question. Um, so you have got the opportunity to detail what you'd be looking for support for. So when we sent out the invite for, for, this, for this particular webinar, we had quite a few questions came in from, from clubs and understandably so around um, some detail on the Be Active Wales Fund. So what we thought we'd do, because there were quite some, some common themes, we thought we'd try and address some of these um, questions in an open forum so everybody gets a, a consistent message. So if I've applied for the Emergency Relief Fund, can I apply for Protect and Prepare? Um, I think Kerry has, has, has touched on that in, in, in his aspect, but Kerry, do you want to just confirm um, you know, that, that sort of process in terms of can they apply for both elements? Sure, Al, yeah, so it, it's one or the other. So it's, um, the way I would see it simply is that if, you're, if, the, if football remains in lockdown for the next couple of months or few months or whatever, then it will be protect only. Um, so protect in effect uh, relates to where clubs can't go back to play or train. Once football is back up and running or imminently going to return, it would switch to prepare. So there's a link between the two. But when, when you apply, it's one or the other. It's the same form with two sort of offshoots within it. So it's either protect or prepare. Great. Thanks, Kerry. Can I apply for lost income through the Be Active Wales Fund? So not directly. But in terms of the income that would have been generated from possible tournaments or festivals that would have been um, run over, over the summer period, what they would go on to cover in the future in terms of additional equipment, um, in terms of coach education support and things like that, those are eligible through the Be Active Wales Fund, but direct loss of income isn't. So if I'm a new club, can I apply to the Be Active Wales Fund? In terms of new clubs, obviously, if they were completing the survey, then they wouldn't have any um, evidence of the impact of COVID-19 to base themselves on. But obviously, in terms of if we can evidence the need and the impact, like Annalise has touched upon, then yes, they would be eligible, um, providing the, the impact um, and the need is there for the, for the new club um, and, and what the impact would be on, on, on the community. Similarly, from a, from a new team's perspective, um, you know, if the impact and uh, the evidence is there um, for, for the need of new teams, and obviously we're going into a new season, so there'll be a lot of new teams starting, um, then they would be eligible. And again, I would encourage all clubs, if they're setting up new teams, to really detail the, the impact of COVID-19 on their club through the survey initially to highlight the importance of, of those new teams coming through. In terms of coach education support, um, again, it would link back to, um, to our guidelines in terms of return to play. So obviously, though, we're not in a position to return to play at the moment and we, um, we're not in a position to provide too much detail on what return to play would look like at the moment because the government guidelines does not allow um, uh, the return of, of, of contact team sports and also gatherings of more than one other household either. So we're not in a position to to detail the guidelines on, on return to play. But for example, um, in terms of group gatherings, we could look at ratios of, of, um, of one to seven, one to eight, 
moving forward. Um, so we might need some additional coaches to support those smaller groups training that would then obviously be conducive um, for um, some additional coach education support to fund the online football leaders that we're running, for example. And also in terms of relation to new teams, then that coach education support would be uh, eligible as well. Similarly, in terms of the facility hire support, uh, again, based on our guidelines, if, um, and also it depends on what facilities are available to clubs when we are in a position to return to play. It may be the case that um, you know, 3Gs and, and AstroTurfs are open uh, and some grass pitches aren't ready to be uh, used for, for, for training um, by your club. Traditionally, clubs would use 3Gs and AstroTurfs in the winter. Um, so that would be, um, could be an option for, you, for, you, for your club um, through, through the fund. And also important to highlight that in terms of clubs or organisations that are running huddle off on football programmes, then they would be eligible um, under the Be Active Wales Fund in the same way as any other, other team um, within, within the club or organisation. Um, and again, it, we would highlight and stress the, the importance of evidence in the need um, and the impact on, on, the, um, on the work that you would be doing to try and get Huddle and, and fun football pro programmes back up and running and what um, specific support you would need for, the, for them to return. And any other comments, Annalise, Kerry, on, on those questions? you want to add anything? No, I think you covered most of that. I, I think looking at some of the, I don't know how you want to deal with the Q&As, there's quite a few come on there, but I think in terms of giving examples of what could be fun, it's very, very hard. that This is a, a brand new fund. Well, it's a brand new situation for all of us, you know, in terms of our lifestyles. None of us have ever gone through a pandemic before. So none of us really know what's going to be needed for clubs, certainly in the prepare phase, what, what these innovations, adaptations have to, are going to be to provide the necessary confidence for clubs and parents to return with their kids and everything. So I think it's very hard to give examples. Um, but just to stress what Anne Lee said, it's that direct link between what's been proposed as a direct response to coronavirus and to stress the impact, but also to work with you very closely first as, as a trust. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. And we hope to be in a position over the next week or so, we've got a webinar week today where we'll be hopefully be able to detail some more information on, on what our return to play guidance and protocols will be. We've got a government, government announcement on Friday that, that hopefully will bring some good news um, related to some time skills around returning to play as well, which will also help this process in terms of helping you as clubs um, get an understanding of what would need to be in place in terms of preparing to return to football. In terms of the, the q and I, I, I know there are a, a quite a few questions. As I said at the start, what we'll do, we'll collate all the questions that are coming through um, and then provide them um, responses to them in an FAQs document alongside a recording of the, of the session, um, just so we can provide the right detail to the, to the question and, and address them appropriately. And then just the final thing um, fr from me is just to highlight some, um, some, some key contacts for you. So in terms of any questions or queries related to the to the impact survey um, if you get in contact with Dan um, he would be able to help you with that I know what we'll do as well we'll send an example a good example of, of a club that have completed the survey already just to highlight what we would look to see in terms of detail and information from clubs so we'll share that alongside a recording of the webinar um, so that's just important to note that we'll share some, some good examples of, of how clubs have already completed the survey. And in terms of then any questions from a trust perspective around the Be Active Wales Fund, Kevin would be the point of contact and his, and his details are there. And, um, and with the fund due to launch um, tomorrow uh, from a Sport Wales perspective, um, there's a link there to, 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 um, to more information. Um, and Kerry and Elise, there will be some um, further detail on sort of criteria, FAQs and things on the website from tomorrow? Yeah, they're all going on tomorrow, Al, and they'll also be, um, we're setting up a new system on the website, so they'll be able to type in your question and then they'll give you options of what the best choice of answer would be and then we're going to monitor them internally and we can get back to anyone who gets in touch then if there's specifics that we need to let them know about. Great. And then just, just as a reminder, obviously with football clubs, um, 
they have to complete the survey prior to applying to the Be Active Wales Fund. So just a reminder on that. Um, but obviously use the information that's available through um, through Sport Wales and, and, and their platforms. In terms of return to play, uh, we've got, I highlighted the, the webinar we've got next Monday. If you haven't registered for that webinar, I'd encourage you all to do so. There, there are still plenty of spaces left and we will be in a position to provide some further detail on what return to play um, could look like um, over the next, the next few weeks and months um, and some protocols and guidance for clubs around how to do that safely. So please, um, please sort of sign up for that webinar and, um, and uh, join us next week and to get all the information related to that. And that's it from me in terms of an update. Thanks very much for those of you who posted the questions, some great questions in there, and we'll, um, we'll collate uh, the answers um, on that and provide them with an, with a sort of in an FAQs document um, from tomorrow, hopefully, alongside the recording of, of the webinar. Um, and the example um, survey completion as well. Just want to say thanks very much to, to Kerry and Annalise, uh, Dan and, and Kevin from a, from a trust perspective, um, and uh, I'll hopefully see some of you next week uh, with our Return to Play webinar as well. Thanks very much.